이면이 되겠습니다. This New Testament. 347. Let us all read in one voice. In hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began, and at the proper time manifested in His Word, through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. Amen. Let us bless each other. Be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Thank you for your graceful praise. The last time schedule of mankind, it is evangelism and missions. And if you see Matthew 24, 14, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as the testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And if you see in Acts 1, 8, uh, oh, when you receive but you'll receive power when you, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll become the witnesses to the ends of the earth. God has called us so that we can do evangelism and missions. But in the world, they say that evangelism is foolish. So those who hold on to evangelism, the world says they are foolish. Even though we might listen to the words that we are foolish, but really, I truly uh, hope that you guys do not be hindered and really hold on to the gospel and become the foolish evangelist. Because the works will arise through those people. And God, through the Holy Spirit, I really hope that this time be the time where you truly receive the blessings and really receive answers. And there is this one author who uh, wrote this book. And she's an author of, uh, uh, she's a Japanese author, but it was once uh, the best seller. Uh, the power of justice, it is the power or the power of organization could change our lives. That's what the book was talking about. There are many people who are sitting here that cannot organize their lives with the word. And then I was able to see that many people who read this book, The Power of Organization, they start organizing their house. Even when I look at my room, I can see that my room's not clean. Every time my wife comes into my room, she keeps on saying, oh, let's throw out the books that you must throw out. I say that, yeah, I will, but it doesn't take place. Really, at times, it is very important to organize the things that are scattered and are messy. What does it mean to organize? It is discarding the things that we must discard and possessing the things that we must possess. That's what we call organizing. And it is very important to organize things with the, uh, setting things in order. And what is organization? It is pu putting the things where it must be. Then inside of our lives, there are things that must be first organized. 
하나님과 하나님의 말씀이 여러분 인생 속에 정리되어져 있어야 하는 거예요. We must have the organization of God and the Word of God inside of us. What is the core of the Word of God? It is the Gospel. Then what does this Gospel speak of? It is talking about the fact that we are given the new life through Jesus Christ. Receiving and enjoying the life of God as my life, that is the Gospel. And this is the first priority that we must organize. I told you last week, because these things are not organized, we are always falling into hardships and suffering, and we are always heeding to the words of people. And envious of the world, and they make their own law, and they're trapped by that law. Then, if there is something that we must first organize inside of our lives, it is the Word of God. And second, prayer is allowed to us by God. We listen to the word of the gospel, and the prayer of the gospel must be organized inside of our lives. But because this is not taking place, we fall into powerlessness, and we fall into obsession and fall into addiction. But if we truly have the organization of enjoying the prayer of the gospel, though we might live in this world, we live as those who possess everything. And that mean, that's what it means by prayer being organized inside of our lives. Then what is the reason why God gives us prayer topics and prayer answers? All of that reason is for evangelism. This eternal life that God has promised before even time began, he revealed it through evangelism. That's what is told in today's passage. This evangelism being organized inside of us, it is the reason for our life, and it is the reason for our existence, and it is the reason why we have to make money. If there is one reason to those who have received salvation, it is for evangelism, which reveals the eternal life of God. So the last time schedule of mankind is in the evangelism and missions. If you see in today's passage, uh, Paul, Apostle Paul, he writes a letter to his true son in faith, Titus. And one person was Timothy, and another person was Titus. And Apostle Paul writes the letter as the pastoral epistle and sends it to Titus. And if you see in verse 2 today, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God who never lies promised before the ages began. So this was promised before the ages began. And how did he allow this to us? If you see in verse 3, it says, At the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted. So we are living inside of this world as a foolish evangelist. But at that proper time, God will do the work. At the time of God, God reveals evangelism, then through those blessings, what must we hold on to? First, 
First, it is evangelism that reveals the work of eternal life promised by God. Through the a pulpit, we are organizing the word. When the word, gospel, and evangelism is organized inside of us, then everything becomes thanksgiving to us. And when we have word, gospel, and evangelism organized inside of our lives, when we're faced with a problem, we're able to give thanksgiving. There's a way for us to not be discouraged inside of the problems. If we view everything with our eyes of evangelism, then we're not shaken or falling into discouragement. And we're able to find the answer and the plans of God. There's no one that does not have problems. Even those who have received salvation have problems. But because they know that fact that God is with them, the problems does not become a problem to them. Rather, through those problems, we are able to realize the blessing that God has prepared for us and really go deeply inside of this blessing. Everybody has problems. If you don't want problems, then you can say that there are no answers inside of your lives. I don't know if you can understand this in a theological manner. There was a problem with God. Don't misunderstand me. Really, don't misunderstand me. What was the problem of God? It was mankind. Because these mankind were a trouble. God created mankind with His image and gave them all of the blessings. In Genesis 1.28, God created us with giving us all of the blessings to subdue and rule over the land. But we keep on turning against that. And you all know the Nephilim age. The sin came upon uh, the mankind and they only thought of evil. That's how mankind became. And how far did he take it? He says, the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth. The Israelites, the Israelites were saved from Egypt, but whenever they're faced with a problem, they were always resenting. And on that each time, God gave them the eternal answer, and that was Christ. That is why with the blessing of Christ, we must change all of the problems. All of the problems are things to give thanksgiving. That is why all of the blessings, uh, all, all of the problems are blessings. And that is why the reason why we must pray and the missions of God it lies within that problem. There are many people who were greatly ill but received healing. And there are many people who are suffering spiritually and receive healing. But you're able to see that when they're healed with the blessing of gospel, they're able to save those who are facing the same problems. I was able to see that many people who are afflicted spiritually, they receive healing through the gospel and they're saving other people. And you guys all know, all know Helen Keller. When she was born, she was born, and on the 19th month after she was born, she had this. Uh, she was bleeding in the inside, and she became blind. And later on, she met Anne Sullivan. And 
and Sullivan, she wrote the alphabet on the hands of Helen Keller and taught her. Ann Sullivan was a person who attended the schools of blind people. And if you see in the reports or the... And Sullivan, her father, was an alcoholic, and whenever he comes home, he will beat the mother and her. So the, the uh, relatives of Anne Sullivan and her sister were discarded. And later on, Anne Sullivan, her sister, also oh, died because of bleeding. And now she had this anger inside of us. So because her parents died early, she was rejected by her relatives. And even her son or, or her sister also died. That is why she became very uh, aggressive and she had this fear, fury and anger inside of us. But to her, uh, someone placed the nurse to Ann Sullivan. And this nurse started helping Ann Sullivan. And this nurse keep, kept on telling Ann Sullivan that God loves you. And if you see in this one uh, report, it says 183 times told Ann Sullivan that God loves you. And that's when Ann Sullivan started to change. Even same with Ann Sullivan, she had to receive... Uh, she had to receive surgery in her eye, but they did not have medical things. That is why they used cocaine. And there was too much cocaine went inside of her and that she lost her sight. And later on, but she received this surgery and she was able to see again. If there was a mystery to save the help, Helen Keller, it was because uh, Anne Sullivan received the same healing through the gospel. And when Helen Keller died, passed away, she said, oh, bury me next to Anne Sullivan. If through prayer you're able to find all of the missions that God has prepared for you inside of the problems, then with that problem you're able to save many people. It doesn't matter what kind of problems you may have. It doesn't matter what kind of diseases you have. It doesn't matter what kind of spiritual problems you may have. If you receive healing through the gospel, then through that you're able to save many people and you're going to stand up as the witnesses. That is why we must not lose hold of prayer or have it stolen away from us. Then what is evangelism? With the imperativeness of evangelism, we must view people. With the imperativeness of the evangelism, we must view myself, also all of mankind. Right now, what kind of age is it? It is a time where they're losing hold of humanity. Look at all of the crimes and murders that is arising. When mankind were first created, that wasn't the image. But because mankind were separated from God, that is when they lost hold of 
uh, the humanity. We haven't read today, but if you see in 1 Corinthians 1.21, it says, let us read together. This was also shown in the praises of our choir. Let us read together. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom is pleased. God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. Hallelujah. It says evangelism is the wisdom of God. If you do not know God, then we're not able to know myself and the people that God, God has created. But if you see through the wisdom or the knowledge of our own thoughts, then that seems folly. But there is no other way for God to relay this gospel. That is why God uses evangelism. Right now it is the age of the disaster. But beside the Bible, there is no other place that speaks about this disaster. But right now it is the age of the disaster. And it will gradually grow. Disasters that people cannot understand are continuously on the rise, and many of the families are being suffered. And they're well learned, but they're not in peace. But the Bible speaks of the reason why. It's telling us that it, there is a spiritual problem, but all the people have spiritual problems. The non-believers, they don't know about the spiritual problem. That is why they're destroyed by the spiritual problems. But those who are saved, those spiritual problems cannot break us down. But because of that spiritual problem, we are able to receive greater answers from God. And you are able to see the prayers of Paul. And I told you this before a few weeks ago. It wasn't just a physical problem. He said the problems that he had was the thorns of Satan. But if that kind of problem keeps on arising inside of you, then uh, mentally and physically they will suffer. If you're able to see those who are inside of the hospital greatly ill, their their thoughts and their hearts have all uh, are broken down. So if you are, if you have this problem continuously inside of your lives, then there's no choice but to uh, uh, face problems. But Paul said that when I'm weak, I am strong. So, uh, for us, receiving salvation, it means, it means that everything is finished. We keep on thinking of salvation as just one thing. Inside of salvation, there's everything. Realistically, everything is finished. From, starting from Genesis all the way to Revelation, what does God want to say? He's telling us that He wants us to receive salvation. Then we're able to know that nothing can become a problem to us, not even our spiritual problems. So take a look at the biblical figures. There were many problems 
inside of their lives, but those were not a problem to them. If you do not organize the gospel and if you do not come to the conclusion of the gospel, then we cannot take care of this disaster. Without evangelism, there is no other way. So what is the reason, the fundamental reason why problems arise inside of mankind is Genesis 3. And that is why they are living inside of the backgrounds of Satan, sin, and hell. That is why without us warning, disasters keep on arising inside of our lives. And that is why we must relate Christ who could solve all of these problems. Oh, I need Christ inside of my life. Oh, this world we cannot save without Christ. We must be able to know that. And, and viewing the necessity of Christ, with that, uh, when we view the world, we are able to see the world correctly. We must no view the world with the necessity, the eyes of the necessity of Christ. If you meet Christ, it's finished. We must have the assurance that we need Christ, and I need Christ inside of my life. That is when the disasters of my life is finished. Then who is that Christ? It's telling us Jesus is the Christ. That is why we say Jesus Christ. That is our confession of faith. But relaying that Jesus is the Christ to other people that we call that evangelism. Inside of your lives, you need Christ and relaying the uh, fact of Jesus Christ to those people, it is evangelism. Then what is the reason why we live? Evangelism is that reason. If we are able to see that, then we are able to have missions regarding our occupation. And inside of our works, we are able to see the blessings of God connected. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May your eyes open to view everything with the eyes of evangelism. Second, then what is the standards uh, for evangelism? It is the standards for evangelism. First, evangelism is the work of God. It tells us in Acts 13.48, it says, when the Gentiles heard it, they began to rejoice. And those who were appointed to believe, those who were appointed to eternal life, they all believed. It means that they were appointed before time began, and all those people will believe and inside of that we are here God is using us and us staying inside of the works of God that is evangelism and to those who, who have received his salvation if you see in Acts 16 15 Lydia, she opens up her heart and she believes that Jesus is the Christ. And Lydia knew that saving one individual could save that region. And you're able to see that through one person, Lydia, the whole Philippi was saved. Are, did you guys receive salvation? And did you guys accept that Jesus is Christ inside of your heart? Then really pray. 
Give me the answer to save this one region and give me the answers to save this one specialized field. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you receive the blessing of saving that one region. And third, if you see in Romans 16, it tells us about the future time schedules of God. Because we must do world evangelization, that is why God will give us the answers and truly pray. Really, God used me to save the individual, the region, and the whole nation, the whole world. And this is the life which is organized through evangelism. God, please use me to save the individuals, the region, and the whole world. Right now, God is opening up the evangelism doors to the 237 nations. Right now, everything is limited. So, 100 years ago, through one missionary, Korea received the gospel, and the churches of Korea had revival and growth. But what about now? They're not expanding anymore. And even the churches right now, they're losing their strength and they're closing their doors. That is why God is opening up the doors to the, the 237 nations. Even inside of Tarapang, the gospel is becoming limited. That is why the gospel must spread out through the 237 nations and the 5,000 tribes. If our eyes do not open to this, then our prosperities will become enslaved captives and colonized. The churches must follow after the word of God. We must set all of our life directions to this. Walk in the walk of faith by ourselves. That's not that's not enough. Our prosperities are becoming enslaved, colonized, and captivated. Really, take a look at history and take a look at church history. What, God, our church must want to be used by this evangelism missions. So no matter what the case, evangelism missions must not be blocked. I will tell you again. Are you guys going to send off your children to enslavement, cap captivity, and colonization? Just because you are doing good, do you think your prosperity will do good? So I'll come to the end of my words. It is the time schedule of evangelism. So if you see in Acts 9, you're able to see God breaking down Paul. And there was Ananias. To save many lives, God broke down Paul in, on the way to Damascus. And at that place was Ananias. Ananias. Everybody was just living their lives, but Ananias, it was different. He was a person who was praying for the kingdom of God to be established in this land. And that is where God breaks down Paul, who later on became the true evangelist. And you are able to see in uh, Acts 10, you are able to see Cornelius. The Jewish people, because they were inside of their own uh, thoughts, they were having 
a fuss against oh Cornelius coming back to the Lord or not but at that place was Peter on that day on that time at that place God is at work I really want our Hana church to be on that day on that time on that place I really want all of us us individually be in that place. And later on, God raises up uh, individuals in Acts 13. You're able to see that God was leading their lives and everything. Uh, on that day, on that place, uh, on that time, and on that place. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May our Hana Church be in, in there.